water resource engineer. What does a water resource engineer do? We calculate how much water there is, and that's our supply, and then we calculate how much water all of us need, and that's our demand. I'm also a student at the University of Colorado at Denver, where my graduate research is tying together climate change and snow catchments. So you wonder, what do water resources, climate change, and snow catchments all have in common? Well, let's find out. Precipitation can come in the form of rain or snow. Different areas of the world receive different volumes of rain or snow. In New Zealand, for example, they get up to nine feet of precipitation every year. In Colorado and in the West, we get a lot less. Colorado gets about a foot and a half of precipitation each year. And that is just the average. Some years, you have more, and that would be called a wet year. In other years, you have less, and that would be a dry year. Incidentally, this is a very dry year. Snow can be conceptualized as a frozen water reservoir, where it stores water when temperatures are at or below freezing, and releases fresh water when temperatures are above freezing. And by making observations in the wintertime of what our snowpack looks like, we can make assumptions about what our water supply is going to be in the spring and the summer and the fall. So I looked at two different locations for my graduate research. I went to New Zealand, and I'm from Colorado, born and raised. And so I wanted to see how two different regions of the world were approaching and incorporating climate change. The other commonality between the two locations is they both have snow, snow catchments. So what's a snow catchment? It's the area where a snowflake falls and then would travel to the closest stream or river. So a side-by-side -side comparison of New Zealand and Colorado, you'll see first the locations are very different. Colorado is in the northern hemisphere, and New Zealand is in the southern hemisphere. This is reiterated by the latitude and the longitude. The land areas are remarkably similar. However, Colorado is a rectangle, and New Zealand is you know, a bunch of little islands. The population is also very similar, roughly around 5 million people, and we're still continuing to grow. The elevation changes between the two. You have New Zealand starts off at sea level, and then in Colorado, we have our 14ers, which I know Chris is uh, very familiar with. The climate in New Zealand is a maritime climate, and in Colorado, it's a continental climate. The industry that depend on the water resources include hydropower, municipal water supply, agriculture, tourism, and that's only to name a few. The potential percentage of water supply resulting from snow accumulation is different in New Zealand than it is in Colorado. In New Zealand, a smaller portion is snow. In Colorado, a larger portion, 80%, is from snow. So a little snow science. To calculate a volume of water that you get from a volume of snow, you need to know the snow depth, you need to know the snow density, and you need to know your catchment area. Putting numbers to this calculation, here we have our maritime climate, which is again New Zealand, versus our Colorado climate, the continental climate. We have our snow depth, snow density, a snow water equivalent, and to give you guys an idea of you know, what the differences in that snow density are, in Colorado we have our champagne powder. It's that light, fluffy powder that sometimes can be hard to put into a snowball. And in New Zealand, it's heavy. It's really hard to shovel a sidewalk in New Zealand. And if you were to do that same snowball, it would probably hurt somebody if you threw it. So the potential, the potential volume of stream flow from a 1,000 meter catchment is going to be drastically different in New Zealand than Colorado, about three to one. 
So climate change, what does that mean for our water resources that come from a snow-dominated catchment? In this graph, on the x-axis, we show time, in present, and then we go off into the future. In the y-axis, we show an increase in temperature. The Intergovernmental Panel of Climate Change develops models and scenarios of what the future may look like. And not all of those scenarios end up with the same outcome. As you can see here, our scenario A shows a larger increase in temperature, while our scenario B shows a smaller decrease in temperature. We bracket that and call that our level of uncertainty. Generally, those scenarios agree that we will have an increase in temperature. So what does that mean? It means that our snow elevations are going to start going up, our snow depths will start decreasing, and our snow volumes will start decreasing. When we go back to those tables I showed you earlier, it means that that percentage of our water supply that comes from a snow-dominated catchment is going to decrease in both locations. And when we put those numbers into this table, we see that the volume of water that we're getting is going to decrease. Our frozen water reservoir just got smaller. Projected changes in climate could have a profound effect on snowpack characteristics. And so in addition to these actions, we as a community dependent on water supplies need to think very seriously about conservation. We need to save every single drop. And we need to conserve our water resources today and tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you.